the prompt for day 24 was game, so I ended up making a chess game, full game of fool's mate. I was reliably told that the board colours are actually inverted, so apologies for that. The process was actually quite simple. I worked this out for making, when I was making the columns, I found out that I could use a radial gradient here to basically break up my circle, my, my sphere, cut it into sections with a gradient across each one, and then use these gradients to define the explicit coordinates of the surface. And then when you subtract the generated coordinates, um, so generated, subtract 0 0.5 times two, subtract that from your explicit coordinates, and this is gonna create the, uh, the proper displacement relative to the sphere. So this means that I can just generate stuff using things like sine and cos to make my to make my cylinders and then what you can see me doing now is I've taken my z gradient and I have just pulled this through a an RGB cut and this is giving me manual control over the, the shape because this then goes into uh, a multiplier after the sine and cos. So this controls the radius at each point. So I'm essentially sweeping this uh, this profile. So this process is actually pretty much as quick as modeling, which was quite amusing to me because vector displacement I've always thought of as being very, a uh, very slow process. But when you're actually working in bulk like this and I've got, you know, 16 pawns and the two of every other, oh, four of every other and two kings, two queens. And if I want to make any changes to any of these things, I can just change the profile on these on these RGB curves. So it's really, really easy for me to do. I can change the radius really easily. That's what that multiplier is on the right of the curve. Um, I need to do a little bit of extra work there with the extra curves to give a face to the knights because they are not just cylindrical. And I was just working off some reference to work out what shape the pieces should be. So I've had a little bit of padding control there. So essentially the zero to one gradient that is making my that is making my shape. I don't want these to be butt edge up to each other because I'm doing separated geometry. I need some padding in between it. So I just made sure I had a little bit of maths in there just to make sure that I had the control over how much spacing was going to be in between each one while still being able to control a number of, of pieces. So I set the number of pieces to be 32, which is the number of chess pieces you have. And then I have used the index. So I'm taking index through the mix factor, subtract one through the next mix factor, subtract one through the next mix factor and so on. And this basically allows me to do sequential pieces along, along my indices. And the indices are just from a snap. And I've used them to assign the profiles to the particular the particular section and then I've also used it to assign position so I'm able to move independently each one of these 32. Now what you can see me doing is I'm making the board so I made sure to preserve a little bit of mesh at the bottom and this I've turned into a square I'm now stretching it bigger and then I just need to make it 3D by taking a sort of a square with beveled corners raising it up and scaling it out you need to just control the profile a little bit on an RGB curve because it was going a little bit odd and then working out a few things with materials. So wooden chessboards generally have wooden squares across the whole thing and then they'll have a wooden edging and this edging is mitered. So I wanted to make sure that I had mitered wood grain. So that's what I was just doing there. And then generating the actual chessboard, I've just done this with a using modulo or actually in this case fraction less than add and then fraction again so I've got my colors in place and you can see I've got a little bit of mesh coming out on top there this is actually caused by when I've added the square to create the opacity for the chessboard it's actually added a square on top as well so I was just removing that just to make sure it was on the section below zero now you can see I'm using all of these mix arrays that I've got and I'm using combine XYZs to basically create the positions. 
Need to do a few extra things, such as the knights on the near side. They need to be spun around, just to make sure that I've got them facing into the board. And I will also need to be colouring one side white, because white moves first. So just using a little bit of mass to create an unstretched noise texture, because I don't want it to just be stretched in the z-axis because we're going around a circle, around a sphere, so it needs to be following the surface. So I've coloured half of my pieces white and half of them a darker brown than the board, so there's a little bit of differentiation from the brown and the white of the board. And I'm now marking out my moves. So a fool's mate is the shortest number of moves that you can make to get to checkmate. Basically, you've boxed in the king, and then the enemy queen is able to move out. So all I've done is I've taken the combined X, Y, Z, and I've marked my first and final positions. And then what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that my king is able to fall over. So it needs a first and final position, so it needs to move up so it doesn't clip through the board. And then it also needs to rotate, so it needs a first and final rotation position. Uh, first I thought I was just going to do it all linearly on a slider, but then I thought I probably wanted to have some kind of easing, it would be more, uh, more natural to look at. So I'm using map ranges set to smoother stat. These just mark my in and out frame numbers for each, for each motion, and then the 0 to 1, so it slides across that factor. For the falling, I set my map range to be linear, and then I put it through a an RGB curve so that I was able to get the bounce but you can see I'm just I'm making sure that's working there so it's a major bounce and then a slightly smaller one after as always fade to sphere and clay wipe <laughs> 